hand over, thank you very much. I'm going to hand over to my co-founder, Lisa Varga, who's going to give um, the closing statements. <laughs> <laughs> you are very Hi, everyone. Um, how are we all feeling? You know, we've, uh, we've been sitting for a little while now, so I will, I will try and keep this as, um, as brief as possible. Um, but as Gory mentioned, my name is Lisa Varga. I am the co-founder and co-director of the Digital Collective. Um, a huge thank you again to all of our panelists today. Um, I hope you got some great insights. Um, from our panels, we've seen themes such as intersectionality playing a crucial role in digital adoption. Um, the challenges of digital inclusion are complex and multifaceted. Um, and so to tackle it, we've seen that adopting a multi-stakeholder approach um, is super important. Um, and there's also a need to tackle it at a multi-level approach, at a microsystem or individual level, as well as at a macro system or looking at employers and legislation um, and kind of societal levels and how this translates into formalization, uh, legislation and kind of standardization as well as portability across the EU and beyond. Um, so some great insights and some really thought-provoking conversation there. As we draw to the end of our agenda for the day, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to share what's on our agenda as Digico into 2023. Um, and as we move into 2023, which is, as we've discussed, the European Year of Skills, so our year as Digico, um, I would like to kind of also wrap that in the context of the digital decade um, where the EU has set out its goals uh, to ensure that 80% of adults across the EU, so 16 to 75 year olds, um, have the basic digital skills that they need and we're currently sitting at about 58%. So there, as we've seen, 40% or more people that lack that. So there's a huge gap that we need to fill. Um, and into 2023, we're going to continue our journey to empower organizations and put in place this community of knowledge and sharing and collaboration supported by this unified digital skills framework um, that will allow people from all backgrounds um, to access skills and knowledge that they need. So just to recap, our mission is to ensure all people have access to skills that can improve their lives and help them thrive in the digital age um, through a collective unified approach um, to tackling these growing societal and economic inequalities that really stop sort of that access to the, to the labor market. So far, we've built a really strong foundation um, and we've been lucky enough to have been able to work with some incredible partners, um, some of you in the room, some of you virtually. Um, and it's really humbling to have the backing of, of Google um, being able to support us through this journey. Uh, and we plan on reinforcing, reinforcing these partnerships and building on them um, and using this as our catalyzing force for change. So our three main areas of focus into 2023 are around our basic digital skills portfolio, so bringing on board more organizations and more NPOs um, that are directly targeting vulnerable individuals. Um, our Skillify adoption, so I'll speak a little bit more about Skillify, which is our assessment tool based on DigComp, and of course our community engagement, so our community of practice, which we've just launched. So from a basic digital skills portfolio perspective, um, we first want to sustain our targeted approach to inclusion. We've been very targeted in our approach of finding organizations that share our goal of targeting marginalized individuals. So we're going to continue to do that um, and make sure that we are finding that invisible middle um, and we believe that is a, a crucial role to play. We're also going to be increasing the number of projects that we're funding and extending our geographic reach. So new projects, um, both sort of socially innovative and high social impact, that's kind of high on our agenda, as well as looking at Southern Europe and Eastern Europe um, on top of the four countries that we're already in. So Skillify, I want to touch on this a little bit, and there are some demos when we do the networking, so you can have a little look at it, uh, get to grips with it. We've got some of the wonderful tech support who have helped us build it in the room, so if you do have any questions, technical or otherwise, um, you can ask them. Um, I hope I don't throw you guys under the bus there. Um, but throughout the day, we've touched on topics around the power of tech in contributing to digital inclusion. Uh, and this is something that we wholeheartedly believe in and have worked on developing through our self-assessment tool. So Skillify is based on DigComp framework, uh, which is hopefully all of you know what DigComp framework is, but it's really backed in, in academic theory and um, it's, it's a really good way to be able to kind of test tools. We've only looked at the first four 
levels of the Digicom framework because we're tackling basic skills. Um, but we currently have it available in six languages. Um, it consists of self-assessment tools as well as testing tools. Um, and the idea here is that it gives you real-time recommendations on ways that you can improve your tools. Individuals can take it as many times as they want so they can see progress in one place of how any interventions that they've taken have contributed towards their growth uh, in that digital area. Um, and we are also providing credentials. So there's a certificate at the end of it, which we've seen today is super important for formalizing those credentials. Um, so areas that we're improving Skillify into 2023, um, we want to increase the value that Skillify has for our users. So we're improving our training recommendation system and adding more training recommendations as we go. Secondly, we want to broaden out our target audience and get a wider reach. Um, so we're looking at new partnerships and uh, organizations across Europe to really help us do that. Um, and lastly, but not least, um, we've discussed the importance of having comprehensive pathways into the labor market. So what we're hoping to do into 2023, and it's on our roadmap, is to build out that recommendation engine to also encompass jobs and linking out to job recommendations. So not only are we looking at ways that you can improve your training um, and ways that you can improve your skills, but also how you can find jobs based on those skills. So that's something that we're really, really excited about. And lastly, I want to just touch on our community of practice. Lots of you are already engaging in it, and that's fantastic. Um, but one of our key themes which underlined this event is the need to work across, section, across sectors and cross-functionally as a cohesive whole. Um, and our community of practice really embodies that um, to create synergies across all of our organizations that have different missions and different visions, but we're all coming together for a common cause. So we're increasing our reach of the community of practice and welcoming new members with open arms. If you've got recommendations, please do send them our way. Um, we are looking at streamlining, um, obviously, our assessment tool. We understand that there's no one size fits all. So our community of practice is a, a really great way of including all voices and, and trying to develop that out. Right. Um, and that's really it. I just want to say another huge thank you um, for all of you in the room. Without your voices, um, we wouldn't be where we are today. Um, and we do have a short Q&A section.